welcome to the 32nd lecture in numerical analysis we are studying numerical integration and in our previous lectures we have studied trapezoidal and simpson's rule for numerical integration in this lecture we will study gauss gaussian quadrature rule a new technique and we'll study this technique in its simplest form where the integral is from the limits of the integration of the integration are from minus 1 to plus 1 and a function f of x is going to be integrated is written as the sum of w i's and f of x evaluated at x i's right so these i's can be any from uh, from 1 to n and what let's see what is the upper limit or what should be the n to be exact it is called gauss legender quadrature and it is accurate this representation for this integral that is from evaluated from minus 1 to 1 is 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 exact up to the polynomial of order 2 n minus 1 for example if we take n is equal to 2 2 n minus 1 is 3 if we take n is equal to 2 2 n minus 1 is 3 this means if we take n is equal to 2 the simplest form we can evaluate integrals of uh, involving polynomials up to up to order 3 right so we will be working with the n is equal to 2 this means this would be from 1 to 2 n is 2 so this can also be represented as w1 f of x1 plus w2 f of x2 where w1 and w2 are coefficients and f of x1 is the value of f of x at x1 f of x2 is the value f of x at point x2 right so 2 and minus 1 is 3 this means the max order of the polynomial for which we will get an exact answer is x cube using this using this gauss quadrature rule technique right so the options are 1 x x squared and x cube but x4 x to the 4 isn't an option x to the 4 isn't an option if we are working with 2 yes if we work with 3 n is equal to 3 that would be 2 times 3 6 minus 1 5 then we can work with x4 but we'll be we'll try to keep things simple and therefore we limit ourselves to n is equal to 2 this means we can work with up to x to the 3 1 x x squared x to the 3 so plugging all these f of x is 1 by 1 in equation number 1 so if you put 1 f of x if you assume f of x to be equal to 1 this is what we have we are going to assume f of x to be equal to 1 so if you replace f of x with 1 1 integrated is x putting limits minus 1 to 1 leads to 2 and on the right hand side this is w1 times f of x1 since f of x is 1 it's it's 1 for all values of x therefore it is 1 for f of x1 and f of x2 is also 1 because 1 means 1 for all values of x so w1 times 1 plus w2 times 1 this means w1 plus w2 is equal to 2 let's call this as equation number 1 let's try the second option then x integrated x squared by 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 comes out to be 0 right w1 f of x is x so f of x1 is f of x evaluated at x1 maybe x1 plus w2 times x2 f of x evaluated at x2 is x2 so w1 x1 plus w2 x2 is 0 similarly let's put the third possible option x to the 2 x squared integrated gives us 2, 2 by 3 and w1 since f of x is x squared f of x1 is x1 squared f of x2 is x2 squared so this comes out to be equal to 2 by 3 and finally we put the last possible option for n is equal to 2 is x cube x to the 4 divided by 4 putting limits gives us w1 x cube plus w2 x2 cube because x is f of x is x cube so f of x1 is x1 cube and f of x2 is x2 cube right so by symmetry we see w1 w2 to be equal to 1 right w1 and w2 they both are 1 and the sum is 2 so by symmetry we plug these values here w1 is equal to w2 is equal to 1 this means 1 plus 1 is 2 and if we plug these values w1 
is upon here and w2 is upon here this means x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 or x1 is equal to minus x2 and if we put these values in here w1 uh, put as 1 here and w2 put as 1 here this means x1 squared plus x2 squared is 2 by 3 but x1 is minus x2 so if you plug this value here x1 is equal to minus x2 minus x2 squared becomes x2 squared and x2 becomes plus minus 1 by 3 uh, and we can prove the same for x1 x1 would also be plus minus 1 by 3 but x1 is minus x2 from this equation this means if x1 is 1 by 1 over square root of 3 x2 is minus 1 or it can be vice versa it can be vice versa x1 can be minus 1 over square root of 3 it can be vice versa so x1 can be 1 over minus 1 over square root of 3 x2 can be plus but in any case they have to be they have to be negative of each other x1 is negative x2 if this is negative this is positive this is positive this is negative so equation 1 becomes finally equation 1 becomes w1 f of x1 plus w2 f of x2 that is the numerical computation of this integration is 1 times because w1 is a 1 w2 is also a 1 therefore 1 this is also 1 f of x1 x1 is x1 is 1 over square root of 3 x2 is minus 1 over square root of 3 so f of 1 over 3 plus f of negative 1 over 3 f of 1 over 3 means what does this mean this means f of x evaluated at this means f of x evaluated at point at point 1 over square root of 3 right this means f of x evaluated at point 1 over 3 1 over square root of 3 and f of negative 1 over square root of 3 means f of x evaluated at negative 1 over square root of 3 right let's solve an example so that we can understand this this equation better example is f of x is x squared plus x so let's first e e integrate it using the technique we know x squared the integral x u by 3 for x the integral x squared by 2 and we put the limits and we solve and reach to this answer 2 by 3 let's try to prove that uh, using cos quadrature approximation we reach to the same answer right so we have we'll have to plug this into this equation let's call it as the final equation this is let's call it the final equation f so we'll be using this final equation f so this is equation f actually this is equation f and we are going to put everything in this final equation so f of 1 over square root of 3 means this is f of x f of x is x squared plus x so f of 1 over 3 1 over square root of 3 means that x would be replaced with 1 over square root of 3 1 over square root of 3 squared plus 1 over square root of 3 because x squared plus x replace x with 1 over square root of 3 replace this x with 1 over square root of 3 2 and you get this 1 over square root of 3 squared is 1 by 3 plus 1 over square root of 3 and what is f of minus 1 over square root of 3 is replace x with minus 1 over square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 3 squared pl my plus minus 1 over square root of 3 is 1 by 3 minus 1 over square root of 3 so now we are ready to plug these values in this one this one here and this value here and you get this this definite integral evaluated using gauss quadrature rule one times one by three and plus one by three and this is one by three minus one over, over square root of three so solving this these two cancel and we are left with 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is 2 by 3 wow it's the same answer why have i written it wow because because the same answer we reach to using the exact technique that we studied 2 by 3 is the exact answer so this is the exact answer this is the exact answer and using this cause quadrature rule this is 
this is the approximate answer and we see that the exact and approximate answers are exactly equal to each other this means this cos quadrature rule works but it works for in its simplest form it works for the integrals for definite integrals for which this limits are minus one to one since we are studying some basics therefore we'll stick to the basic form minus one to one right and we will be using n is equal to two and if we do that we will be able to solve to solve f of x for which the max value the max polynomial uh, the max order of the polynomial is 3x u we cannot solve integrals for x to the 4 x to the 5 using if we use n is equal to 2 so we have actually we have studied this with certain limitations we have studied cos Gaussian quadrature rule with certain limitations with n is equal to 2 and the range of the integral range of the limits are the range the range is from minus 1 to 1 right that's all for this lecture in the next lecture we'll try to solve some more examples using gauss quadrature rule thank you